many people do, you know, go on, particularly people who are into weight loss, do crash diets and they would eat uh, very low calories. And this essentially slows their metabolism down. So it's very important to eat the right amount of calories, create uh, sustainable caloric deficits, uh, meaning that you need to be uh, to be eating something like 85% of your daily, daily energy expenditure, not less than that because this will slow down your metabolism. Welcome to the Spartan Up podcast with Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan Race. We are talking about overcoming obstacles. The same way we teach people to get over obstacles on the course, we will teach you here on the Spartan Up podcast to get over obstacles in your mind. Today, get ready to geek out on metabolism as Joe talks to the Greek scientist Apo Atsilakis and athlete Alex Wish. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Honey Stinger and Climber Honey Stinger. Made with organic honey and delicious ingredients. Use the code HSSPARTAN2020 at HoneyStinger.com to save 30% off. Climber, the most effective cardio and strength machine. Climber provides a full body strength and cardio workout with zero impact in only 30 minutes. Go to Climber.com, that's C-L-M-B-R.com, and use the code SPARTAN. All right, Joe DeSena here, CEO and founder of Spartan and the Spartan Up podcast. And I've got a special one for you today. I got a company called Panoe, and we've got a super athlete along with Apostolus, if I got that correct. I should know it, yes. see, being, yes. being that we have a company That's... called Spartan. But uh, this is a Greek scientist, inventor, tinker who came up with something that what? Measures metabolism, measures workload, measures what? VO2 max, everything? Essentially, by looking at the levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide at rest and during exercise, we can understand the metabolism of the human body, uh, whether the human body is burning fats versus carbs at rest or during the exercise. And of course, we can measure the maximum oxygen consumption, which is VO2 max. So essentially, in a nutshell, we're, we're sensing uh, the fuels of the body. And this is how we can get uh, these insights. And are you me you're measuring this through what device? So we have built a device that is portable, affordable, and it has the same accuracy as the bulky medical equipment that used to measure these things in the past. Let me see. What does it look like? You have one? So that's it. That's the device. Yeah. And that is the mask that the user wears. So you put on, you put on a mask, basically, and you go run down the street. Uh, you essentially do a 20 minute test and and so then you download the data what are you going to tell me that's going to make me fitter faster better uh, first of all we're going to measure your metabolism meaning we see exactly how many calories your body burns uh, during the day and uh, based on your caloric and macronutrient needs our team could create a personalized nutrition plan also we would measure your vo2 max which is essentially the maximum oxygen that your body can consume at peak exercise. And uh, essentially VO2 max is the strongest predictor of human longevity. And uh, associations like the American Heart Association recommend that it needs to be tested at least annually. Also the test uh, might raise some red flags on the cardiovascular, pulmonary, or metabolic health of our user. And in fact, may, there were many cases that the test literally saved the user's life because we saw something bizarre on the data and we were able to refer our user early on to his doctor. Uh, and lastly, uh, we will calibrate your wearable. We will increase the accuracy that your wearable measures the calories that you burn during your workout, and you will be able to see in real time whether your body is utilizing fats or carbs and at which ratio. So you're just looking backwards though, right? At, at, at what I did. And if you saw that I'm burning more fat or more sugars, um, 
with your device, you, for, for example, I want to burn fat, don't I? Of course, of course. Right. And this is something extremely important. This is the so-called zone two, which is a low int- at typically our bodies at medium to low intensities maximize their fat burn and uh, you can essentially pinpoint uh, the range, your heart rate range that you maximize your fat burn. And when you work out, you can work out within, the, within this raid range and teach your body to burn more fat. Yeah, so, so if you saw that I was burning a ton of sugar and, and, our, and optimally we want to burn fat, you would say, okay, Joe, you're not, metabol- you're not metabolically flexible. We got we to gotta train your body to burn fat. What would you tell me to do to, um, to do that? So we see uh, your fat burn both during exercise and at rest. So the first thing that we would tell you is we will identify your zone two and we would tell you to train at your zone two in order you know, to teach your body to burn fat. Uh, also, we will see whether your body is burning enough fats at rest. If not, you may need to decrease your carbs in your diet. And there are other things that help uh, uh, and teach our body to burn more fat, like uh, fasting um, and decreasing, in general, the carbs in our diet. Yeah, you know what I used to do to become metabolically flexible? I don't know if you're into this, Alex, but I would, I'd be, my last meal was, say, at 7 o'clock the night before. Um, I wake up in the morning, do a big uh, workout, very intense, uh, deplete theoretically deplete glycogen and then go on a long hike for hours still having not eaten anything my body has no choice there's nothing left to eat but fat so um i think in theory i gotta test it with the panoe i gotta i gotta try uh the device but i i think i'm pretty metabolically flexible um and it is funny when you tap into fat alex i don't know if you agree with me or not it's like that second third wind right tapping into it, I mean, it's just a better, it's a better source of energy. It's a more dense source of energy. So, I mean, especially like, I mean, on my end of the thing, you know, I've done a lot of Spartan races, I've done a ton of your races, but on the ultras, um, using fat for um, fuel just lasts you a lot longer. It's more efficient. Yeah, there's no, no doubt about it. What did you do, Alex, with the, with the Panoe? What was your big uh, challenge? Um, last Memorial Day, I wore a 20 pound vest. We raised money for veterans mental health and awareness. And I did the 1,000 pull-ups, 2,000 push-ups, uh, 3,000 squats um, in about six hours and eight minutes. Uh, I had a couple of challenges. One was I actually, training for some people think you want to get light. I actually wanted to maintain my weight. I wanted to stay bulletproof, right? It wasn't, it was more about like not getting injured and getting stronger. So by doing a Panoe test to understand my metabolism, I could understand like my macro breakdown I should be focusing on. And also like how many calories I need to eat during the day, because I was doing, I mean, there's some, I mean, some days I was doing like hundreds of, you know, pull-ups, push-ups and squats, and I was mixing in the assault bike. So I was burning a ton of calories. So getting that kind of really solidified definitely helped me out. Um, and then in addition to that, the one thing that also helped me kind of for doing the event was knowing that upper kind of threshold of zone four be zones before zone five. So zone five is that anaerobic zone. You can't sustain that for long. And because I was doing this EMOM style, when I was kind of prepping for this, I could identify like how hard to push myself or how many pull-ups, push-ups and squats to do in a segment of a minute in order to kind of stay at that cusp of that zone four, just on the edge of going to zone five and get a little bit of recovery before the next minute. And so it really helped me able to do that the entire six hours. What are the, what are the big takeaways, all the data you've looked at? If there are three things in my life to change that kind of you know, goes across everybody you've looked at. What what would you say we got to do? This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Honey Stinger and Climber. Climber is a vertical climbing, full body workout that combines high intensity cardio with resistance training. It's one of the most efficient workouts on the market. With zero impact, the machine is safe for almost any age or level of ability. It's the first vertical climber to feature a large format touch display with on-demand instructor-led classes. Climber's patent-pending design has a high-quality build and a low level of required maintenance. It's easy to move, making it perfect for commercial or at-home use. The open design allows the user, you, 
to maintain correct body position without having to be inches away from the monitor. Climber just might be the better home workout you're looking for. Climber provides a full body strength and cardio workout with zero impact in only 30 minutes. Go to climber.com, that's C-L-M-B-R.com, and use the code SPARTAN to save $250. Honey Stinger is made with organic honey and delicious ingredients. Honey Stinger's waffles, energy chews, gels, and bars give you the fuel you need to push harder, go further, do all the things that we do as Spartans. For training and racing, you need convenient nutrition that tastes great and works. Honey Stinger is Spartan's official on-course nutrition. It's made with real honey. Honey Stinger started with a simple plan. Wholesome ingredients, great taste, and, of course, honey. Why does Honey Stinger use honey? Using an ingredient engineered by nature, not in a laboratory, it has its benefits. In fact, the less you mess with Mother Nature, the better. That's why they're committed to the True Source Honey Pledge. And they've got a special code just for our audience. You can save 30% with the code HSSPARTAN2020. That's HSSPARTAN2020 at HoneyStinger.com to save 30% off just for our Spartan Up podcast listeners. Essentially, something that we observe uh, very often is that uh, undereating is equally bad, actually, as overeating. So many people do, you know, go on, particularly people who are into weight loss, do crash diets and they would eat uh, very low calories. And this essentially slows their metabolism down. So it's very important to eat the right amount of calories, create uh, sustainable caloric deficits, uh, meaning that you need to be uh, to be eating something like 85% of your daily, daily energy expenditure, not less than that because this will slow down your metabolism. Actually, this is probably the biggest obstacle that uh, uh, a sustainable weight loss program needs to overcome. Uh, because the challenge in weight loss is that as you're losing weight, you want to maintain a high metabolism. Because in most cases, uh, because weight loss is not done correctly, the metabolism slows down. And after a point, the weight loss stops. So this is a very important takeaway that we have observed among our user base. Uh, The second thing that we've seen is that... uh, we can detect, uh, we can see the body's kind of limiting factors. So we screen the cardiovascular, the pulmonary, and the metabolic system. And always one of these three is the, uh, the weakest point. By knowing your limitation, uh, you can focus uh, on this limitation during your, during your training and improve it. For example, if someone has... Uh, his limitation is coming from his heart, so he has a low aerobic capacity. We would understand this and tell him that he needs to focus more on high-intensity interval training to work at these peak zones and start building some VO2 max. This will increase uh, his performance. Another example is if we see a lung limitation, which is very common, we will see, for example, that the capacity of the lungs, the volume of the lungs, is low, we would recommend a breathing workout to improve this. So knowing your limitation and focusing uh, in order to improve it, it's very important. And uh, something else, like the third takeaway that I would say is that uh, you need to pay attention to your fat burning efficiency. So make sure that uh, You don't skip these low-intensity workouts where you train at your zone two. Know your zone two uh, and train train there to teach your body, to force your body uh, to burn more fat. Tell tell the audience what the zones are. Zone one, zone two, zone three, et cetera. Um, I'll I'll give you a quick kind of overview and then Oppo can jump and give a little more detail. Um, So zone one is basically you're, you're at rest, like lying in bed, totally relaxed, you know, more or less at rest, might be sitting at your desk. Um, zone two, you know, we're out there potentially depending on the person's fit level, you know, you're walking, you might be hiking. Um, you're starting to get into some type of aerobic activity and kind of getting that movement going, but not like a a running base or not at a high running base. Um, so three, we start picking up now, now we're kind of running. Let's say we're able to still like maintain a conversation with someone while we're running, but we're kind of picking that higher point of that, that run, holding that conversation zone four. 
if we're still talking about that kind of running piece, now you're running, um, you're starting to kind of lean a little bit of ways from having that conversation, hard to talk, uh, but you're able to kind of push that level. And then we go into zone five, which is like, you know, you're either, you're kind of at that point where you can't sustain it. So you're doing that going all out or kind of hitting that higher percentage of output um, where you're working off that, like, you know, that the ATP stores, you're working off that like uh, energy stores you have very minimal of and uh, your, oxygen, your, your body's unable to take in enough oxygen to satisfy the need of output that you're doing. Some uh, kind of characteristics of zones is that, you know, zone two is like the zone that you're burning fat. Zone five is like your red zone. You're purely anaerobic, so you can sustain it probably for a couple of minutes. And by combining the zones, you can do efficient, uh, for example, high intensity interval training, which is going from zone five to zone two, and then to zone five, and then zone two. So essentially the zones is like the alphabet of workouts. How do people find you? Essentially, a user can take uh, a Pinoe test uh, at a nearby gym, at a nutritionist's office, literally at any location that has a Pinoe unit, or they can take a test at their house as we can ship a Pinoe unit at them. So they can take a metabolic assessment at the comfort of their living room. All right, you guys are awesome. Alex, that was insane what you did last year. Good job. <laughs> and um, it was. We gotta get, I got to get a Pinoe for the kids. Thanks for listening to this episode of Spartan Up and taking the time to make yourself better and stronger. Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan, is back every Tuesday with new interviews. If you want more training and resilience, check out Joe's new book, 10 Rules for Resilience, Mental Toughness for Families, at spartan.com slash 10 rules. And find the key takeaways from some of our favorite interviews from the past at spartan.com slash tough Bible. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Honey Stinger and Climber Honey Stinger, made with organic honey and delicious ingredients. Use the code HSSPARTAN2020 at HoneyStinger.com to save 30% off. Climber, the most effective cardio and strength machine. Climber provides a full body strength and cardio workout with zero impact in only 30 minutes. Go to Climber.com, that's C-L-M-B-R.com, and use the code SPARTAN. 